Hello, welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today it is time for a first impressions video. And I'm gonna be doing a blend that a lot of people have asked me to review in the past. It is a Rattray's blend, and the blend is this. Marlin Flake. I have this nice giant 100 gram tin, courtesy of a very generous viewer. Now, from what I have heard about Marlin Flake, it is supposed to be similar to Old Gowrie, and I have reviewed Old Gowrie on the channel. I enjoyed Old Gowrie. I haven't had a ton of Rattray's blends, but I'm expecting this to be pretty similar. It is a vapor, it has Virginia, it has Perique. It also has Black Cavendish, though. I don't usually love Black Cavendish, but we'll see if Rattray's or Kolhos and Kopp, who produced this blend, have made a blend that can help me get past my dislike for Black Cavendish. So, it's Rattray's Marlin Flake. It is produced by K&K. It's available in 50 gram tins, 100 gram tins like this, and then I think you can also get it in 500 gram tins. Lots of good stuff in here. Virginia's, Dark Virginia's, Perique, and then maybe a not so good thing, the Black Cavendish, but a first impressions video is all about me trying a blend for the very first time. I try not to do too much research on the blend before I try it first because I don't want to color my opinion of the blend. Once I've had it for a week or two, I will record a full review, do a little bit more research on it so I can give you a nice complete picture of what the blend is. But in this video, I'm going to be trying it for the first time and telling you my initial impressions. So, we have a nice little pull tab top. Let's crack it open. Mm. Ooh, wow, okay. Smelling something here. Very meaty, very barbecue-y. It almost has that old McClelland ketchup-y kind of aroma you would get from their Virginia sometimes. There's a little hint of that going on here. These flakes are, whoa, okay, let's see, these are long, I think. I'm trying to get one out of here, extract it from the tin. Oh, wow, okay, I was not expecting this. <laughs> uh, is this just a giant, okay. <laughs> let's see what we can do here. Holy crap. I don't know if I can pull an entire flake out of here. It's just like a giant piece of beef jerky, basically. I think I actually ripped that off. I don't think that's the entire flake. So that's crazy. Was not expecting this presentation whatsoever. It smells good. It's a little fruitiness in there. Not much hay, maybe a little bit of old, like moldering grass. But yeah, there is kind of that meaty barbecue-y sort of aroma a little bit of that ketchup McClellan thing, but I've got plenty here for a bowl. So I'm gonna rub this out. I'm probably gonna have to dry it up a little bit. It does feel a bit moist, and so I don't think I'll be able to load it and light it right away. So let me prepare. All right, gang, I have managed to load my beautiful Tinsky pipe with this, uh, I almost said Old Gowrie, with Marlin Flake by Rattray's. It's been a long time since I've had Old Gowry, so maybe I'm misremembering this, but I thought I remembered it being kind of a broken flake. So I wasn't expecting these gigantic flakes from Marlin Flake. I just assumed it would be just standard, you know, rectangular flake pieces. But anyway, we're all loaded up here. I'm going to light this up, and I'm very curious to see what this smells like. Tastes like, and smells like, I guess. Anyway, let's get to it. Okay, copious white smoke here. It seems to be burning well. I am getting a little tingle right away from this blend, which is interesting because my understanding was that it didn't have a lot of perique in here, but I'm getting a little lip tingle from the perique, a little tongue tingle. Sometimes that can be just the Virginias themselves and maybe the fact that there is black Cavendish in here as well. Black Cavendish often leads to tongue bite for me. And it's not going there yet. Obviously, I just lit the pipe, um, just the first few puffs, but there's this little tingle. And I can't quite tell if it's the Perique yet or if it's the Black Cavendish and the Virginias wanting to bite me. So I'm gonna have to relight this. Let's see what happens. Mm. 
I can definitely taste the dark Virginia in here. It's a nice full-bodied Virginia flavor. I'd say the overall character of this blend is maybe kind of medium-bodied. It's not super, super strongly flavored. But I definitely can taste that these are kind of that dark, matured Virginia flavor that I like in blends like Elizabethan Mixture, my favorite vapor. I am getting that tingle still, and it does seem to be leaning more towards potential tongue bite than it does to Perique spice. So that's something. I am getting quite a bit of sweetness from this. I'm assuming a lot of that could be from the Black Cavendish. And again, the Black Cavendish might be contributing to the fact that it feels like this could give me tongue bite. It hasn't yet, but it feels like it could. It almost feels like the components have a sort of caramelization to them. The sweetness that's inherent in this blend is definitely, I don't want to say gloopy, but it does feel maybe slightly gloopy. It reminds me kind of of blends that I've had that have a higher proportion of Black Cavendish in there. Black Cavendish always seems to burn a little wet to me, and that might be going on in this blend. I tried to dry it out as much as I could before I did this video, but maybe I should have dried it out a little bit more. Maybe that would change a bit. Right now, I'm tasting an okay vapor. It's not knocking my socks off. It still has a little bit of a tingle in the tongue that I don't think is the Perique. I think it might be trying to bite me. The Virginias are good. I like the Virginia flavor that's in here. It's more, <clears throat> or it's less on the high, bright, grassy end of the spectrum and more towards the dark, moldering, leaf litter end of the spectrum. It's how I often describe dark Virginia blends. It seems like it could be good. I'm not getting a ton out of the Perique yet. I'm not getting that peppery spice in the nose. The tingle I'm getting, I think, is more potential tongue bite than it is the Perique. Right now, I'm kind of ambivalent about it. It seems like it could be good. It also seems like it could end up biting me and not being something that I enjoy a ton. But it's interesting. I really like the presentation. I've never had a flake that long before. It seems like it's just a giant roll of these flakes that they've crammed into this tin, which is kind of fun. I'd like to see a 50 gram tin to see if it's similar. I would assume they had to cut the flakes smaller to fit them in a 50 gram tin. But yeah, a really interesting blend. It, it's been so long, like I said, since I've had Old Gowrie that I'm not getting a ton of recognition from this because supposedly they're very similar. But as of now, it could go either way. I'm not really sure how I feel about Rattray's Marlin Flake. But give me a couple weeks and I will give you my full review. Tentatively hopeful, but also a little bit worried that this blend is going to end up giving me tongue bite. But we'll just have to wait and see. Thank you so much for watching this first impressions video of Rattray's Marlin Flake. If you haven't subscribed, do that already. If you would like to support the channels on Patreon, there is a link in the description box below, and it is very much appreciated because videos like this that deal with pipes and pipe tobaccos cannot be monetized on YouTube. So if you enjoy this kind of content on YouTube and would like to support it, hitting that link to Patreon is the way to do it. So until next time, until we meet again, I've been your good friend Bradley, you've been the audience, this has been Stuff and Things, I'll see you later.